The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here, Tiger Technicians Hour, and we're looking at the, the uh, S and P futures are down 19 at 41.26. Look at that! Look at that range that we've had from early this morning, came from the 41.15 ish area up to 41.36. Make it peak C1, C2 in the Chapman Wave methodology. Arch over, have a beautiful left side, right side price time match from that uh, Doji candle right there. Get down, test at 41.16-ish uh, area, rally all the way to uh, 41.34, just under the previous high. Turn around and in four bars, five bars, four bars, we go down sharply to a lower low in the 41.15s again. And we have a bit of a rally and it's really struggling. I think that we're making some kind of a short-term top. Just uh, that's the way I'm looking at it. Not so much the weekly charts, but the daily charts are telling me that there's a bit of a struggle going on. This is very selective. We're looking at uh, certain sectors, certain stocks, for instance. Um, let me just do this right now. Let me just run the numbers. Down, down, down 196 at 33,894. In this range, the nine period moving average is still over the 14, but it's starting to struggle. And I think that over a period of couple of days, 33,590s is going to be tested. And if we close under that, we can arch all the way down to the 33,400, even 33,300 level. Do I think this is a time to short? You know, I think if you time it exactly right, you can get something out of it. If, you, if you're a little late, then you, a chunk of the move has already been done. I just think it's a digestive phase. If you look at the rectangle formation, Spent some time over the last uh, two weeks talking about this rectangle formation and that this blue line is the midpoint. And if this blue line gets taken out in the daily chart yeah, right here, the daily chart of the Dow, you can anticipate that you'll start to trade under that. And that'll be a bit of a roof for a short period of time. Uh, the weekly chart says you're in the rectangle. The rectangle says you can stay in the rectangle for a little while. And we'll see exactly what happens. But I, I think the upside is very limited in the Dow. Let's go to the S&P. Is it the same? No, it's slightly different. A little different chart. Um, it's, it's in the upper range. The 9 is still way above the 14. But there's a chance that if we slide under 40, 40, we're at 41.08. That's 60 points. That's 600 Dow points. That's a lot. Let's just make, be a little con conservative and say starting off at 40, right there, uh, 40. 40.82 to 40.78. That'll be the first range. If that if that's taken out, that's negative. If there is a spike above yesterday's high, this temporary falling axe formation says watch very closely because then the 40 then the high of the seventh I think the seventh yeah seventh of February at 41.76 becomes a target, and then the 41.95.44 high uh, that was at the very beginning of February becomes. The next target but I'm going one step at a time and I'm suggesting to you that there is a lot of resistance the weekly chart has already made a peak D but it's holding very nicely I'm going to draw this in right now a narrower rectangle formation I said so just be careful unless we can get to 4200s in uh, this part of February that's this coming week what is it what are we looking at here we're looking at February so this is the week of of the 15th so, yeah, next week, by, by next week, if we can get to that, uh, have a really strong spike to the upside, that'll be fabulous. I think it has to wait a little bit. I just see it as a digestive phase here. Uh, very spectacular move from 259 to 313 in the QQQs. Uh, why shouldn't it? 304 have a little bit of a rest. 296 is going to be absolutely important to hold over the next uh, five to seven sessions. If there's a break into three 15s, that's fabulous action. But we'll have to see if it can do that. Let's just do this quickly. The SMH has made a peak D. It, it has this inside track repellent zone right there. It's down uh, four, almost five points at 248.03. I think that this is just telling me that we're in a digestive phase, that the weekly charts are still very good. Let's go to gold. 
Uh, gold is now down 20 at uh, uh, 1844. You can see it's, it's not, maybe it's going to be a one to one going all the way down to 1810. But at 1844 right now, 1836. Is that a 36? Yep, that's a 36. Yeah, 1836 is key 200-period exponential moving average support. But this is the first time since we broke above the 14-period uh, moving average uh, that was back uh, the week of the 11th of November. This is the first time that we're actually going under it. We haven't closed negatively. Uh, the 9 is still over the 14th. 14. So this is still a digestive phase for gold. Looking at silver, that means the upside is has a lot of 18, 1870s resistance. Uh, silver is trading uh, down. This is leg E to the downside under the 200 period moving average of 22.14. The pink nine period moving average has been negative at least for two weeks. And now we're looking at 21.53 down 34. Uh, to me, this I'm going to have to put I'm in a sell mode in the, in the uh, both gold and silver in the daily. The weekly chart, I have to wait for Friday, but I believe that's going to have a down arrow. It'll be negative. So we're also looking at high-grade copper. High-grade copper is down sharply today, down uh, 0.08 at 3.987. We're looking at uh, where we're we going next. We're going to go to, uh, I want you to do uh, crude oil. Crude oil is in the lower range, uh, 78.41 down 55. I don't see it. I think this rectangle formation can last at least another two, three weeks. And then I think we can see uh, a potential spike into the 86, 87 area. We're at 78 right now. So we'd have to see if that's really going to unfold. And if you're looking at um, wood, which is the iShares Global and Timber Forestry ETF, made a peak G top of doji candle in the daily, a peak E in the weekly. I think uh, finally iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF is having another breather after a really strong move from the uh, 71 area to, to, to 80. I mean, that's that's big for iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF. One thing I want you to do is the VIX index. Now, this is going to be that. I'm bringing it up. I, I usually just talk about it peripherally. I'm going to make a little bit more of a big deal of this. I think the VIX index, which had a big spike from the 17s to the 21s and then pull back to the 18s, watch it closely. Because at any point over the next, what's today, Wednesday, by Monday, Friday afternoon or Monday, if the volatility index closes, it can't just get there and then turn around. If it closes above 20.80, 20.30, that, that resistance, there's a real good chance that it's going to try to tackle the 21.80, 21.94 high that was made on the 10th of February. So, so far, all it's saying is it's down. It's saying it's not, you have to fuss about it right now. I'm just saying I'm being ready for subscribers. I didn't want to add any more to the diamonds or the, or the three times long. We've taken real nice profits. We have core positions from much lower down. I might even switch to the short side for a quick trade uh, with one of the indices. I don't know yet, but I am a, I am somewhat cautious being, uh, I'm waiting for pretty sharp drops to get to some particular areas that we've been waiting patiently for. Haven't got it yet. Just got to wait and we'll see what happens. So I'll be back in a moment. That's what's happened. Take it. This is our Dow's down 196. As it is down 24. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. 
These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. We're back and looking at the E-Mini. Uh, it's just had a very nice rally from the 440. Went to a lower low in the arch formation. And now it's trying to form a cup formation. Remember the dreaded H can turn into... A very positive U-shaped pattern. This is the one-minute chart. Remember, we're not talking daily, weekly, monthly. We're doing one-minute charts. Let me just show you this here. Uh, I'm always looking at three particular patterns, straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation. Combination of one and two and one and three comes down sharply, makes an arch formation, the dreaded H. If it takes out that left side low, but within two bars, preferably two, could be three, but preferably two, closes above it, it says you can rally to the, to the arch level, not higher. But if the technicals really move up sharply, it means you not only will you take that out, but if you close above the arch high, usually it's a peak A or a B and it fails, that become a, a U, becomes a U-shaped pattern and you can start going much higher after that. Well, let's see where we are. Uh, we've gone into, oops, into the U-shaped pattern, and it uh, has so far closed above that arch high, and we'll see exactly what happens. And it makes a 41.35 support, but if there's a close above 41.42 uh, at any point, that'll be a very good sign intraday, that is. All right, let's get back to our story. We're looking at, um, I spoke about the VIX index. I wanted to, um, I think I did that, I'll do it again. The dollar, someone who just came in late, I started a leg B in the daily chart. Remember, we, we had, this is a little mini H pattern. It was almost like a rectangle pattern. It went out below it. It has two bars in which to get back up, close above the left side, a low. It did that. Now it, it's closed above the arch high, above all the different highs on the left side. That's really important. Went to the 50-period exponential moving average. Peak A stalled, and then it went to B. Now it's in leg B. And that says that the if at any point at 102.103.96 uh, right now, if there's even a touch of 104.50, that 104.74 will become a really important 200-period moving average magnet. Not yet, but that's what what will happen. And you can see it was a magnet before, and then it got repelled back in around about the 9th or so of uh, January. And we're going to be watching this closely. Why? Because the nine period moving average is cross positive. So, so far, this is in a buy mode. I can now put in an up arrow. 
because the stochastics flattened 82 percent. MACD is expanding the nines over the 14. The price is way above the nine, and it's above the 50 period in leg B. So it says there's a good chance that we should get to a leg D. That's a we're in leg B, pulls back, makes a peak B. Then it goes to a higher high by one penny, starts leg C, makes a peak, and then it has another high by one penny, goes to leg D. And that says that whole area of the 104s uh, to 100 and I'd say touching 105 is going to be very important. Why? Because this is still just starting a move. And that way, we, well, I should mention we are long, uh, subscribers have been long since 2018 in the dollar. We watched it go all the way to the upside, um, 121, it comes back down. But our stop has never been hit in the uh, UUP, which is the dollar bull uh, fund. And uh, so we are still long. And this is going to be interesting. Why? Because the, the 6th of January, the high was 105.63. So I'm watching this for the first time. I can say, remember, I spent hours on this uh, over the period of uh, months talking about the left side, right side price time match. That's bar symmetry. 101.30 was the low of the week of the 3rd of June. I ran all the way to 114.78. We've taken little bits off the UUP, but we still have a major core position. Now what we're looking at is it came in one bar late in a little doji candle on the, 20, the week of the 27th of January, but it was the following week that it took out the 101.30 level. It went to 100.82 on the 3rd of February. And now I'm not going to put this in to say, I, I'm just going to do it once and then I'm getting out of there. To say, oh, look, the tide has turned because everything from now on is now looking at the tide. No, it's a weekly chart. Uh, the, the daily tide has turned to a buy mode, but that's it's just a daily chart. And it says it should go to a D. It doesn't say how high, but the weekly chart needs a lot of work. That pink 9 p.m. moving average is still way negative under the 14. The MACD histogram has improved a lot, but it's still not even close to being positive. The stochastic is still way down at 17%. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And the weekly chart, I have this as an F slash C. It looks to me that that really could be an F, that we won't go back to the highs um, that we saw uh, in the 114 area, 114.78 back in September of 22, that we could have a rally and then come back down again at some point. So all I'm saying is that the dollar at this particular point is moving very nicely to the upside. Gold is having a well-deserved, well-earned breather. I suspect, as I'm looking at these different charts, that gold at some point <clears throat> is going to get back on track, but not just yet. It needs this breather. So let's see, I've done that, done that. Oh, EUR, USD. <clears throat> Look at that. Yeah, there's almost like a dreaded H. We're sitting on the 50 period moving average, whereas the dollar broke the 50 period moving average. The euro dollar currency pair is sitting on it. And we had the same bar symmetry from the, the, cho the choice that I had was this candle right here of the 22nd of April at 1.093. It plummets down to the one to the what is it? 0.9 9, 0.95. Uh, let me just see if this is for me. Uh, uh, yeah, it is, but I can't answer. Sorry. Uh, yes, and that's and then what we did is we took out a little doji candle, then we took out the high, and now we're pulling back in the bar symmetry. I didn't take the bar symmetry from the low. I took it from this little tiny doji candle right here in the weekly chart of the euro. And if you look at the USD JPY, what do we have? We have the same thing right here. <clears throat> symmetry, bar symmetry from that long-legged doji candle there, and now we're rallying. So that says usually the dollar yen a, a currency pair in other words the yen moves in the same trajectory as the dollar but not necessarily the same price or percentage move we're just the same direction okay with that said what we're looking at is there's a chance that we're going to have a digestive phase here for about a week or so and that's the way i'm looking at it i'm being very careful we're in leg c in the daily chart of the yen it's just gone above the 200 period moving average that's good all right couple of questions came in. Let me just get to those real quickly. The, the stock I was looking for yesterday that I was asked about and I said I'd get to and I completely forgot about it was Valet. Valet? 
Uh, Valet is a trade. It's V A L E is a symbol. And let me just do this for one quick, quick second. Is there such a thing as a quick second? Um, v A L E S A does. Uh, produces, exports iron ore and pellets, nickel, manganese, ore, copper, ferro alloys, metallurgical, and thermal coal, copper, and cobalt. Wow. So let me just put this in here. Of course, I've written this over the years and years and years, so many times that I'll do it again. I, n I never remember. Iron ore. Next. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, right, so we're back and we've gone to uh, this arch formation and store. Yeah, I, I have to tell you, this is such a select market. So, uh, so Valet, I don't see anything right now in terms of Valet. I just... I don't see it. I, I would rather be buying strength. And at this particular point, the stochastic's flat at 8%. On balance firm's quite okay. Uh, MAGD is very weak. And the 9 is way under the 14. I don't see anything. I think it's still in the digestive phase. So I hope that helps you. A uh, question uh, came in. Where was it? XLE. Basel this morning, the XLE closed a gap from February 9th. Uh, isn't this an extremely bullish signal? Hmm. Not just bullish, but extremely bullish. <laughs> Let me just see. <laughs> I don't see that. I think it's stuck in the range. You see this rectangle at the end of the week? I think that's what the Dow is about to do. It's stuck in the range. Um, and I think this pattern repeats itself all over the show. So I think that the XLE is holding very well. I'm not saying to short anything. I'm just saying I don't think 
as yet. I'm seeing it as bullish. By, within two days, if it breaks into the 9130 area, I'll say, that's good. It's going towards the upper. I don't know about extremely bullish, but it can go to the upper range, into the 94s. Uh, <clears throat> but at this particular point, I just think it's digesting gains going sideways. Uh, SVRA question. Hey, wait a minute. SVRA is not SAVA. SVRA. Uh, that went, oh, look at this. Right over here, I've typed in a peak C, a leg C, and it, that was at about $2.27. Well, it continued. Look, this is a floating net. In other words, that's C, that's leg C, that's leg C, and the very next bar from the 26th of January at 2.82, it goes to 2.82 on the 27th. That's a leg C because it was parallel. The very next bar plunges down to the 230s. I say plunges because percentage-wise, that's a big pullback. And here we are, and leg C again. And there's nowhere, I don't see anywhere here that I could have counted that as, no, there's the A. Yeah, I don't see anywhere I could have had two parallel highs to count that as, as a phantom peak. So that was a peak C, and now it's got an, a cup formation, and that says there's a real good chance that it's going to go one penny higher to 2.83, and it's at 2.65. That's a nice 10%. That's a, that's a nice gain if it does that. Yes, and it's only leg B, a peak B in the weekly chart, whatever this is, is... Savara Inc. Savara Inc. Is that, that must be a biotech. If Dan's looking at it, it's very well could, <laughs> could be a biotech. Legs see in the monthly chart. Yeah, I like this. So let me just do this for one second here. Uh, uh, there it is. Oh, the reason why I didn't get that is because I had a, a tennis schedule up. Okay. Savara Inc. I think that's the way it is. Uh, Clinical Sage Biopharmaceutical Company. Clinical Sage. Uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, focuses on rare respiratory disease. Okay, yeah, this is doing very nicely. It's got a cup formation. Okay, uh, I'll do this. I was asked if I could just do a little chat wave notation here. So that goes to that bar. If I do that, that means that you, you would rush up there very quickly. So let me just do this. I'm going to do it a little aggressively and then a little conservatively. First, aggressively says that by the 17th, that's Friday, isn't it? What is the 17th? What is this, February? Yeah, by Friday, it should touch. In fact, it should go one penny above the 282 high that was made twice on the 26th and 27th of January. Um, and this is gray A, gray B. The moment it breaks above that, That'll go to a D. So, yes, that's what I'm looking at in the Star Lake. See, this is very positive. It also says it, it's a little late now. If it had arched over, it would have done it early today. So far, this is more like a trajectory to the upside. The MACD hasn't turned up. So when it finally does turn up, they can give you even more a greater em emphasis. But I don't want to see it under 240. It's a 266 uh, right now. If it closes under 240 in the next two days, it says, oops, it's making the arch formation the dreaded H pattern. Uh, next question I got was, where was it? Um, GNRC. GNRC. Hey, wait, did I finish XLE? XLE? Yes, I did. XLE. Uh, if XLE closes under 86.50 at any point in the next two days, that's the H pattern that says it's going to test the 80, 84s. And if it breaks into the 90... I'd say 91.30 level, that would be very good. I just think it's sideways. Um, the, and what was that? Uh, GNRC. There we go. GNRC. Generac, I think it is. Generac. Generac. GNRC. Uh, Generac Holdings Power Grid. Yes. Nice big spike to 137.47 up 12. I don't know if it had earnings, but it's in leg B in the daily chart. This is a stock that was up in the 500s uh, back in 2021, November, December, and did have a little bit of a tumble down to the, uh, what was that, 88? This is uh, 86.29 on the 22nd of uh, December. Oh, I would say that 86 from 500 is a little bit of a tumble, but this is a lovely daily chart. 
helping the weekly chart, but the nine hasn't crossed positive in the weekly yet. But this is really good. And this is season for Generac, right? Uh, Power Grid. Uh, they are, Generac. Generac is the company that has those. Um, the utility power supply. Uh, yeah. Okay. Acting very well. Um, that makes over the next two. I'm um, not two weeks is too long. Uh, over the next six sessions, if there is a close under 114, that's a very serious uh, negation of the up move. But if in fact it holds very steady, holds 132. And then pops to 144. Today's high is 141.54. That's as this is for the season something that should continue higher. So Generac, yes, very good. Um, TSM, was that a question for me? I'm not sure. TSM isn't it Taiwan Semiconductor? Yep, it is. Taiwan Semiconductor went to a peak G, EFG, pulling back very short term. I think it's going to digest gains on the weekly chart as well. Taiwan said we made a peak D back, I think it was January 22, up in the 140s, tumbles down to uh, uh, 59 or so, and then has a really good rally. So it's just digesting these huge gains. Now, this is a pattern that I'm very familiar with. All of yesterday when I was showing charts, even when I was on with Larry, I showed this particular chart. Um, let me show you something very interesting. Look at this Chadwick inside track repellent zone. Look at that. It just keeps going up and it can't close. And then what does it do? It breaks the left side low bar. And there's the low. So this is looking very much like it's about to make an automation. This is the reason why I'm saying I'm a little bit cautious here. I think even the semiconductors uh, have had a spectacular move and are having to digest these gains. So big deal. It goes from uh, 98 after a spectacular move from the 70s. It could easily come back to the 85, 200-period moving average to digest gains. Look at the SMHs. There you are. See? Right there, same thing. It's gone to this inside track repellent zone. If the semiconductors as a unit at 250, uh, 249.14 right now, is able to get to 255.80 to 259.30. Just a close in that area. It says not only is that leg E in the weekly chart, but all the technicals will be improving, even on the short term, where it's just a little bit weak. But I'm watching the semis very closely. I don't have any signals just yet, but it is saying that it's getting a little bit uh, stretched. I'll be back in a moment. Bowser Chapman, Dow's down 125. It's You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. Let me just see this. NNDM uh, is a company that's at two dollars and eighty-five cents, up twenty-two cents. Wow, big gap up today. This is a tough one. So that's peak A, peak B, peak C, D, E, F. And now it's pulled back. Yeah, this is in a trading band. It's doing really well. I'd say 242 is the key support. 200 period moving average is at 295. It's been there once and it's pulled back. It, it, it looks like the trajectories for the greatest green candles are to the upside so it could have a little digestive uh, action again my my thinking is that this is going to go to 315 to 322 let me just make a note of that n n uh, d m d m at 286 so let me just i i need to see all the notes that i had here and questions that i had uh, over the last couple of days okay tesla tesla is trading at um, it's in G slash C. Remember, we've done this so many times. When you have a chap wave instant restart at PD, consider to count alternate counts. You don't have to type it in until you get to G. And when you get to G, just go alphabetically A, B, C, D. Continue E, F, G, but G is a G slash C with a really good chance it's going to make a, a cup formation and try to get to D. In this case, Tesla had a high of uh, 214.00, round number high on the 9th pulls back to the 188 area, and today's high is 213.98. Ooh, 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 it's three cents away from breaking that. But 215.62 is the 200 period moving average. And you can see with Tesla, the closer you get uh, to the 200 period moving average, the greater the chance you're just going to hang around there for a while. Well, it did that, look at this, from the touch right there on the 22nd of July, at 280.79, it went for, uh, when did it break down? It broke down right there. So let's go to the doji candle of the 30th of September. I would say that out of 30-something days, uh, just above the 200 period moving average and then failing is important to identify the significance and the strength of the magnet of that 200 period moving average. Well, when you're down at 101, be, being cut uh, by a third, uh, 214.67, being cut in half, um, yep, you have a, a, a rally to 200. You've doubled again. So you're back at the 200 period moving average. So this whole 200 period moving average, until you start to see the price of whatever it is, trading nicely above it, I mean, holding, not even touching it on rallies, that is a resistance level. So even if it makes it by three cents going to a leg D, I think that you're looking at Tesla having this as both a magnet and a repellent. And therefore, you could pull back, but you'll keep testing the 208, 209 area for a little bit until it goes sharply into the 182 area. Hasn't done that yet. Um, so I'm saying to you, Tesla, I think, has fulfilled almost everything it needed to have done in this big move up. Now it's a, it should start a digestive phase. And the digestive phase is, just think of it as the dead. You don't have to think, oh, my God, now you've got a short tester. Maybe yes, maybe no. I don't have that at this particular point. I do have the chance 
that there's a rectangle formation, maybe a deeper than a rectangle. I'll go a little higher and I'll go a little lower and I'll say, look, I'm not putting in a, 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 a oval pattern, I'm putting in a rectangle and I'm saying that's the trading range for test at this particular point. Now, uh, next question was, where did it go, where did it go, where did it go? I did that, I did that, did that. Um, you, 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 one, two, three, four. Um, you remember yesterday I said for uh, Peaky, I said, um, yes, you, you, you is in play, but it's kind of stuck in a range right now. So let it just play itself out for a while. I don't see a big move yet into the eights, and it's at 731. So let's watch that. Uh, Dia was the same thing. Mm. In the lower range, not breaking down, but just taking a big digestive phase. Uh, the next question was, where did it go? Oh, I had all these. Oh, XPO. XPO. Uh, this is a really important stock. XPO Logistics uh, Transportation um, trading right now at 37.68, down 14 cents. Now, look at this. The monthly chart went to the, you remember, peak D is where we got to be careful. It can go higher, but that's where other things can happen. Right there, around about August or so of 2021, it hits 54s, plummets down to the 24s. And now it is, uh, after hitting 45 the other day, this dip is now 37. So this is now a leg C, and it keeps having these big moves up to the upside and then a big move down. So I keep thinking that this is the main thing. When you see a pattern like this, it's so much easier to think of it as, <clears throat> look, I drew the cup in, but now it's a lopsided cup. So this lopsided cup for XPO, and this is one that I would say put on your radar this is, it does the logistics for all you know, the truckers. It's really a very important in the transportation area. It's very important. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying the left side in the cup formation, if you go from that high, that was back around March or April in the 45s, I would go all the way to that particular low, the exact low. I would go to the low and then I would say, aha. Let's see if I can make a right side price time match. That means bar symmetry. In other words, that level that I'm looking at in the 45s, when do I think it can be hit? And that says that by the week of uh, the 17th of March or somewhere in the mid-March, if at any point there is a move on a weekly basis, a close over 40, then there's a really good chance that you're going to be moving higher. If instead we break down and we go under 32, that's a, that's much more serious. It doesn't take a lot longer. But that would be the way I'm looking at it. Oops, I did the arrow upside down. You'll have to forgive me. Let me just grab one of these. There, uh, arrow up. And now we've got a peak A, A, B, C, D, E, F down arrow right there and it pulls back sharply to the 200 period moving average yeah it's got a lot of work I don't know what that was bad it must have had something that was very negative uh, it's going to take quite a bit to to repair that damage that's what I'm saying if you can get into the middle of this ugly candle right here 41.04 if you can even touch 41.20 I'd prefer on a closing basis on a weekly basis that it closes over 40 but intraday, if we can go to 41, somewhere in that 41.20 area, 30 area, that's going to be a good sign to say, hey, I'm going to, that was an aberration. I'm going to be going back up. But if it fails, then you've got to look at this low that was made right here on the 3rd of January at 32.02. And get rid of that because you don't need a down arrow when it should be an up arrow right there. Next question I had, where, where did it go? Oh, Fastly, F-A-S-T-L-Y. I think uh, Bob asked about that. And I have an F-A-S-T-L-Y. Now, that can't be right. Oh, man, F-A-S-L-Y. Oh, someone help me. Fastly, Fastly, what's the symbol? I usually know these things. F-A-S-T-Y, F-A-S-T-Y. No. Okay, let me just do this right now. Uh, fastly, fastly, I'll call it ink, does. And what is the symbol? That's really what I'm trying to find here. Oh, oh FSLY, of course it is. FSLY. Don't have the vowels. 
There it is. FSLY went right to the 200 period exponential moving average. This is a slow burn to the upside. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but if you look at the weekly chart and the monthly chart, it's taken its time. Yes, this is now in play at 30.69, up 25 cents past the end. Uh, this is in the, in the weekly, it's in leg C. Oh, I like this very much. Maybe if we can pull back from the 13s to the 11s, it'll be worth looking at. All right, that's that one. Uh, I'll be back in a month. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello everyone, Basil Chapman here, just wrapping up with this section, and we're going to be looking, anyway, I just want to say Fastly has the target on the left side of 14.42 uh, from the 8th of uh, August, and lo and behold, we're at 13.90. So it's actually a couple of days late. Normally, I would have said, you know, that doesn't look like it's going to match it. And I would have gone a little bit further out, but chosen a particular candle. I would have gone there. And that would have said, yep, now you've got another week to go. Uh, <clears throat> or right now, this is the week. This is the week that should test that particular level. And if it does that, then it's got really good support in the 1230 to 1180 area. If there's a sudden pullback. But it's at the 200 period moving average. That should become a magnet now. It should go up and down and wiggle around it for a little bit. So as we're about to wrap up, we've got to, uh, don't forget, we start off at 9 with Tommy Jr. He has a market kickoff, morning market kickoff. Fabulous show. He interviews terrific, terrific interviews. Asks great questions. Does a great analysis. Uh, start off the day. Then, of course, you've got my show. Then you've got uh, 11 o'clock. You've got Steve Rhodes. Then you've got uh, Think or Swim with Kevin Hanks. Wonderful options show. 
Steve, uh, Steve does a terrific show. He answers questions all the way through the show. Uh, then you've got <clears throat> Think or Swim. Then you've got Larry, uh, that, that's Dave White and then Larry Pesavento and then Tom O'Brien wraps it up. So have a wonderful rest of the day. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. It's going to be a very interesting couple of days we've got here. I think uh, getting a little bit toppy, nothing serious right now. But it's, it's a struggle for some areas. Have a wonderful rest of the day. I will see you tomorrow.